Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of the Strand Tennis Center podcast, filled with tips, advice, tennis, not tennis, just life advice too, whatever you need. Uh, like it on YouTube, share it on uh, the podcast as well. Thank you. All right, everybody, welcome to the Strand Tennis Center podcast. I'm so happy to have another guest here. We've been doing well with the guests, Santi. We have uh, Seren Agar here. Seren Agar is another Division One athlete that we're lucky to have. She has played here before and trained in New Jersey. She goes to Boston College. She's Seren.Agar on Instagram. And thank you for being here, Seren. Thank I appreciate you for it. having me, Steve. So I've always wanted to ask you a couple of these questions. Uh, prep, we're going through uh, confidence. Uh, ask uh, Marion Bullfiver, Bullfi if I can say it right, I never say it right. She trained out here. I don't think you hit with her. She's like 300 in the world now. She had the shoulder surgeries coming back. Talking about confidence with her. How confident, in general, as a tennis player, do you feel? Or most of the time, are you... Like, give me your range. Like, are you out there most of the time, on average, feeling pretty confident? Or is it really hard to stay confident out there? Because tennis is so difficult. You could win three matches, feel great, then lose one and feel terrible. Describe it to me. How do you um, feel out there in general? That's a great question, Steve. I think I've been um, battling with confidence for quite a while. Um, you know, playing in the ACC conference, it's definitely very challenging. Um, you're playing against a lot of really good players um, that are highly ranked in ITA. So, you know, recently, like, if I'm ever on, like, a losing streak, um, it can be a little... Uh, difficult and like I do start to feel like I'm losing confidence in matches because obviously it doesn't feel good to lose matches and when you do you know it kind of like you f feel less confident each time you're getting like stepped back onto the court um, but I think you know it's always a learning experience for me my dad's always told me that um, you know even if you lose a match in three sets or you get blown off the court you need to just try and move on from that match and always try to just take it as like a learning experience and go out in the next match and just try to find your confidence in your game and just like trusting your shots as well. well I, I always say, we were talking about this, a good book that you should read called The Confident Mind by Dr. Nate Zinzer from uh, West Point. It's really finding the positive things out of the failure. Really, it's just degrees of failure and then moving on and finding two or three positive things out of it. And that's what you're building from. Really, success is just different degrees of failure and you move forward. But how is it different from high school to college? I know you didn't play in high school. You still traveled around and played. How is the college environment? How is the coaching? Do you feel much more support because you're at a Division One university? I mean, how's that dynamic? How'd you feel going in? Like, how nervous were you going in in the beginning? I mean, I was very nervous, um, you know, starting my freshman year in college. Uh, I think it was very difficult. Um, and I'm sure a lot of college athletes, you know, deal with this and, you know, have a hard time their freshman year. I've heard from a lot of my friends, they said their freshman year was very difficult. Um, but honestly, with support-wise, I've always had support from my parents. They've always been very supportive for me um, in the juniors. And then they sort of, obviously, they're still very supportive. But I was able to get a sort of different, like, um, support from my teammates. And, you know, <laughs> when I'm having those really close matches, just having them all, like, lined up and cheering for me is, like, an amazing experience which is so different from the juniors and playing, you know, and feeling so alone. I feel like it's changed so much in college and having um, amazing teammates who have basically helped me a lot. So is that, was that the biggest thing for you to go to BC? Did you like everybody when you visited there? Were they all super they, nice? And have yeah. they been still super nice? Have they been, the, have you had any issues with any teammates? Um, I wouldn't say, mm, you know, obviously I think with every team, there's always going to be some, Sure. drama there's always going to be some issues but um at the end of the day we're all there to compete to get a great education um so you know we have to move past it and like <laughs> <laughs> i get it know. i get it so challenge system wise different coaches have different systems uh 
Is there a period where you can challenge at any point? How long does a player stay in a position before, or is it a coach's job? To, is, to, does he or she have the objective to say, hey, you've lost three in a row, I'm going to move the lineup around? How does that work with your I team? I mean, what I think our coach does is it's really just how you play in matches and how you train. I mean, like, obviously, it does come down to working hard, um, but also how you perform in matches. You know, I don't, like, if you're losing – like three matches in a row it shouldn't like define you as a person obviously if you're you know busting your ass on the court and you know trying your hardest um then it's not really like you're going to be put down or like lower in the lineup sort of um as long as you're really just grinding and putting your 120 percent effort in those matches then you know our coach is able to like see that. And how does it work tactically though in the beginning? How does he set the lineup? Do you guys challenge each other? Like, well, how does it go? We like, how do you do one, two, or three? Yeah, how does it work? We don't usually play challenge matches. I think it's sort of. I mean, we have like our fall season, and yeah. um, there isn't really a lineup in the fall season, so that kind of determines like, you know, if you're playing really well, then it'll like. Oh, it'll kind of set the yeah. line. So you're doing invitationals, you're playing, you're playing tournaments, kind of in the fall. Basically, yeah. And basically, you're performing. And How'd you do this fall so far? Um, I was doing rehab. I was injured, so oh, okay. um, it was <laughs> very difficult for me. Um, my spring season is now like my fall season, which is you know. How, how did you? And I talked to Mary about this. We got granular about injuries. Is this the first time you had to have surgery? It was the first time I had surgery, yeah. Were you scared? <laughs> Were you nervous? All those things? I I was very nervous. I mean, I was basically crying before <laughs> I went. Um, but okay, that's real. Yeah, it was it was stressful. I mean, it was the first time I was getting surgery. Um, when the doctor told me I tore my meniscus, it was, like, heartbreaking because it happened in uh, a tournament in Colorado. I was playing a 25K um it was the quarterfinals of doubles, and then uh, I went for a volley, and I tore my meniscus. So, did you feel a pop? What did you feel? Um, just a lot of pain. I didn't yeah, hear yeah. like a pop. But uh, yeah, that's tough. I mean, because yeah. we were talking about, we were interviewing her. Most players are injured. Most of them are dealing with something all the time. It's just the way it is. It's not like I always want to do again a whole show on just jet fl jet jet lag and injuries. Because that's most of the time you're basically trying to figure out how to get ready for the match and how not to feel so bad when you play. So you're saying you were out in the fall. You're just starting kind of your spring. So where do you think you're going to fall this season? Where do you think you're falling and sitting lineup-wise to yourself? So right now in the lineup, I think my coach is putting me at six just because he thinks like, I have a lot of less matches compared to all the other girls that are playing higher in the lineup. But um, as much as it's been difficult, you know, playing at six, um, I've tried to, you know, like find the positive in it sure. and just sort of work on my game and work on myself. Um, and also, like in the ACC, like conference, all the girls from one through six are very good and okay. very solid. I mean, yeah. just last weekend we played uh, UNC and Duke. Um, and the lineup from <laughs> one to six, they were all ITA ranked, yeah. all very good players. Um, so yeah. Well, we're talking about the best conference in the country with the best teams in the country. Yeah. Yeah. How uh, how is Division One? How's practice run? How's the schedule? How is your schedule of an athlete? Give me a usual day on a not on a match day, on just a training day. Um, so on a training day, usually I have to wake up around 7:30 a.m. We have conditioning at 8 a.m. And then um, from there, I have a 9 o'clock class to 10.15. And then from there, I go to lift from 10.30 to 11.30. Um, and I have a great uh, lift instruct instructor. Her name's Sophia. She's amazing. And then from there, I go to a 12 o'clock class uh, to 1.15. Um, and then I have 1.30 practice to 4. Busy. And then I have a discussion class from 4.30 to 5.20, I think. And then grab dinner and then head back home. Jeez. So it's a long so, day, yeah. So do you get uh, tutors and stuff as an athlete? Don't you get access to a lot of uh, help if you need it? Yeah, we do get access to tutors um, if we need it. 
right now I've awesome. been fine. I haven't had any tutors. Um, I wasn't implying that you needed one. I no, was no, just no. trying <laughs> to figure out the Division One help yes, in the older yes. system. Uh, if we need tutors or extra help, um, we do have that. So. What do you think is better? I mean, would it be better to have... I mean, a school with all these amenities and all these facilities or try to travel on and play professional tournaments, wouldn't you kind of want the one or two years of support first? It seems like you've got a lot of things that you can use out of the school. I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, we get so much, like, free things as well. <laughs> free I mean, things. I'm on scholarship, so I get, yeah. you know, free rackets, um, training, lift, um, anything I need, I have it. So, <laughs> it's so. How is a practice run? Do you have individual time? How is it broken down? Is it more group time, or do you have time for individual work with a particular coach? Um, it's more group. I would say um, if you did want individual, you would have to you know, text coach and just say, hey, coach, can I come 15 minutes early um, or stay after practice um, and just work on anything you needed extra work on. Um, but usually our our group um, training is very structu structured, um, and I don't know. I seem to like the group practices better than individual. Do you like them because of the competition or just the camaraderie? Um, I think both. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you like this team environment? You, you, know, you go out there and you play tournaments. You're by yourself. Is this team environment a lot of fun for you? Um. It's or a, I know that's hard. I know it's a hard question. It sometimes. is a hard question. I think sometimes, you know, being with your team, it, it's obviously very nice because you get to spend so much time with them. Sometimes it's a little too much and it gets tiring seeing them every day. And um, sometimes I am a little bit of an introvert and I just want time for myself. Um, because it's kind of a balance, right? I mean, yeah. I know the best teams are the ones that work together, but you're playing an individual sport and you also want to play high in the lineup. So you got to beat some of these players as well. Yeah. So... Like, where do you see yourself healthy-wise? Do you think you're one of the – you don't have to – you know, you can be straight. Do you think you are should be – you would be higher in the lineup? Do you think you're one or a three player in general? Um, I think the way I compete um, definitely does show that I can move up in the lineup, um, whether it's, like, two, three, uh, even four. Um, but it just all depends all right. on how how <laughs> I, I do in these matches. But that, as well. I, I, it's difficult. good. It's hard when he, for a prediction, right? Yeah. You just say you're going to work as hard as you can, and the results take care of themselves. We always say that. Coaching-wise, what do you like from a coach? Do you like tactical things? Do you like more emotional? Like, what is the best way? How do you react to a coach the best? Like, in what ways don't you react to a coach the best? Coaching styles. Coaching. Describe. Um. <laughs> That's an interesting question because my dad has always, I mean, my dad was my coach, and yeah. you know this, yes. um, my, basically my whole life. So, um, and He had no problems talking. No, he, my dad loved talking, and I think he was, some people thought, you know, that my dad was, like, yelling at me when we would be practicing, but um, I think he was just a very serious person in general, and... You know, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> we had one of those. Uh, she used to play here late night, and one of the per people were listening and said, that guy's awful <laughs> abusive. What's going on? I said, that's just the father. It's all right. He can do that. It was pretty funny. Yeah. But, hey, listen, if you want to do something great, what are you going to do? Like, uh, you you know, you ever, you, you ever see the movie Whiplash? You ever see that movie? You should see it. No, I haven't seen it. Santi, you ever see it? You saw it, right? Whiplash? You should see it. You know, the guy's a drummer. He's trying to be a drummer. <laughs> No, no, <laughs> he's trying. He's trying to be a drummer in like Lincoln Center, like a Philharmonic, and he's in a school. And the teacher's like, and he won an Oscar for it. The teacher's like, you know, the worst thing you can do is say good job to someone when they suck, because you're allowing them to feel good about themselves when you should. It's a great line. So in other words, if he was always just being like, good job, you work, you know, dig, eh, yeah, you know what I mean. Sometimes you yeah. need to say, hey, look. You didn't put your best effort yeah. forward. You didn't work hard, and you don't deserve this or this. The, yeah. And we were talking about this today. What did we talk about in the lobby? The best yeah. way to get something is to deserve it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want a great life, you got to earn it. And that's just the, all the way it is. I mean, so, but I know you, you're talking about your father. I'm talking about now, at the coaching level, you're playing a match. Mm -hmm. Do you not want your coach to come up? You can talk all the time and changeovers now. You can talk. Do you yeah. not want your coach to say too much? 
Like, what do you need feedback-wise in the match? Um, just, like, I think positive energy. Um, okay. You know, if I'm, like, down a couple games, I wouldn't want my coach talking too much because that would just be so distracting. Um, okay. and Strategy-wise, do you want a lot of, like we were talking about this today, uh -huh. do you want a lot of research? Do you want to know a lot about the player? Do you want to just I think it would be, be able good. to go out there and do, play your game? I think it game? would be good to know a little bit, like, about, like, the players' weaknesses. I think that's always helped because um, I can sort of, you know, because I feel like I struggle to find, like, their weaknesses in the match a little bit because I'm so focused on just, like, myself that I don't realize, like, yeah. what their weaknesses are, like, how to, you know, win okay. points. <laughs> Makes sense. Because sometimes, yeah, I mean, well, you'll be inside a match, you have no idea that someone... You know, and it's not as little as someone has a terrible backhand at that level, but somebody is just hitting the same shot in the same spot all the time. You're not realizing it sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes a backhand, yeah. you know, somebody, somebody will just hit a backhand cross court every time and never change direction. You have to notice that sometimes. Yeah. You know, there's different subtleties to the match. Um, how is the travel schedule for you? I mean, do you, is it, you've always traveled, you played and traveled a lot. Is it better again? With a group, or I know you need your alone time sometimes, but overall, on average, <laughs> I need my alone time. I do. do you like traveling with a group? You like traveling with the team is a lot more fun. Um, I think it's very fun. It's so enjoyable. I mean, we're always in a corner of the airport making like TikToks or something. Um, but I like traveling as a team. I think it's very fun. Um, you know, we get closer. <laughs> 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 but um, so, what's the hardest thing for you? Challenge wise, you think on the court, not structurally, what do you think you struggle with the most? Um, I, would, I wouldn't say mentally, but psychologically, what do you think you. What's your biggest struggle right now? What do you think you need to work on? Um, my emotions. Okay. <laughs> That's something I've been trying to work on. Uh, <laughs> just last week, my captain had to talk to me um, in front of, like, she kind of called me out in front of the group, which I don't blame her. Um, I lost the first set against uh, one of the girls from Clemson. Okay. And I kicked the chair. <laughs> so, because <laughs> um, I was very angry and the chair flipped over. I got a point penalty and I've never actually gotten a point penalty. So, that was kind of rough to... You know. So what did your coach say to you? Um, she kind of just walked off the court. I think she was very upset that I did that. Obviously, I didn't expect the chair to like flip <laughs> over. <laughs> but I was so angry in the moment, um, and I just couldn't control my emotions. Um, and so I let it affect me in the second set as well, and I kind of just started to break down. Um, so I think that's like a main thing that I've been trying to work on, just holding my emotions together. Um, even if I lose a point, just trying to, you know, stay calm and not get so angry on the court. You got to have a short memory and, and, uh, this book, the confident mind is great. You got to say when you like, it's like the shooter's mentality, Remember, you know, the shooter's mentality, something basketball wise, you know what the shooter's mentality is? No, I don't great think so. shooters keep shooting. Cause they'll say it'll eventually go in. You got to think like that as a player. If you miss three balls, you're going to say, well, I'm such a good player. These next three are going to go in. And then it doesn't make any sense, but you go, all right, I'm so good. They're just going to keep going in. But that's how you have to think. You can't stop hitting the ball. You can't stop going for it because you have to have a shooter's mentality. You have to have a player's mentality. You know, you would say, I'm a player. I can hit this ball. I know how to hit. I've missed three. I'm due to hit one in. Mm -hmm. So that's how you have to think. You have to have a shooter's mentality. You have to think, this is only temporary. This is not me. The story is going to change, and that's what a confident person does. It'll help you stay confident mm -hmm. to say, hey, this is temporary. This is not me. I have a shooter's mentality. I'll miss three, but then I'm going to make seven. On average, I'm going to make more shots than I won't. Yeah. And that's how you have to look at it. No one's never going to miss a shot. Yeah. But if you're a good player, you're going to hit more in than you're going to miss. And that's the bottom line. Yeah. But, Saran, that's all we wanted to go over. It was good to talk to you. Perfect. Wasn't that bad, right? No, no, it wasn't. Just a little discussion. She'd always been like, oh, I don't know what to say. I don't think it'll be interesting. But, Saran, <laughs> When you play at a high level, your perspective is interesting. That's all it is because it's yours. So it's original. It's interesting because it's coming from you. It doesn't matter how fascinating everything has to be, but yep. you're going through an experience. You're playing at BC. It's, it's great. I hope you can, in the summer times, gather points 
get some ITFs there yep. and do really well, and all of a sudden things happen. Miriam said the same thing. Like, she never thought she was going to turn pro. All of a sudden, she just started winning matches. And then somebody said, you know, by the way, you qualified for this tournament over here in Europe. She's like, oh, okay. Wow. Like, that's how it happens. So you shouldn't make it like a huge snow snowball or a huge mountain. All of a sudden, just kind of win one match, win another one. You get a couple of points, and then yeah, I can qualify for this. Just one at a time, one at a time. You just kind of do the 1% rule, be 1% better a week. Anything else? you have anything else you'd like to share or anything else that for somebody that wants to play in college, obviously they have to have the base talent. Uh -huh. You're practicing over here. Now, my opinion is most kids should play high school. Obviously, there's I different situations where you should. Tennis. No, you didn't. No. no, what I'm saying is most kids, again, the percentage is I think it's 1,000 to 1 or it's like 1% that somebody's going to play Division 1. Yeah. So I'm not trying to damper people's dreams. I'm trying to say they should probably play in high school. A lot of kids around here are being told not to play high school yeah. because clubs want them to pay money and stay here. Yeah. So what advice would you have to somebody? Like how did the communication go? I'll, I'll digress for a second. With Boston College, did they reach out to you? Did you reach out to them? They did reach out to me. I think they reached out to me um, my junior year um, of high school and – I think I I don't know what happened to that you email. Don't remember? You don't remember? <laughs> no, I remember th getting the first email, and my mom told me about it, but it wasn't like obviously my first choice, or you know even close to <coughs> something I was thinking of. It was my senior year where I got another email from them. Okay. And my mom told me about it, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I should talk to the coach um, yeah, yeah. and just visit, and I did. And How many places did you visit? Um. Well, this was like during COVID time, so I think I just vi visited virtual one stuff. school. Did you go to NC State? Did you visit them? I did not. No. Okay. I thought you That's did. another story. <laughs> I know that was another story. I thought that was something. Yeah. There. But for high school kids, for anybody that want, like, how did this happen for you? Why did you get into tennis? Your sister? Um. I yeah. I think I got into tennis from my older sister because she started playing tennis first and. She needed a hitting partner, so I was there. Um, and in the juniors, I couldn't find anyone to hit with, and it was really difficult. So my sister honestly really helped me, um, and we would practice, like, every day together um, until I started to get a little better than yeah. her. Um, when do you remember that, when you beat your sister for the first time? Do you remember that? <laughs> I do. I remember, yeah. Felt pretty good. Right? It, yeah, it felt good, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Competition is yeah. great. Is your little sister ever going to beat you, you think? How's she get? Um, I don't think so, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I don't the think so. See how competitive I that is? I could be wrong. But she is a lefty, so uh, that could help Tricky. her. Um, She's getting good, though. She's good, right? Yeah, but I don't think she could be. She's got no shot, though, according to Sorrent. No, I don't think she could beat me. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody. You've heard it here from Serena Agar. No one in the family is better than her. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Serena was great. Thank, Thank you. you Got a good info. Division one is hard to play, everybody. It's not something that's so easy and simple. It requires incredible hard work, and you have to do that. And you'll still have adversity. You still have injuries. You still deal with stuff. It's a question of how you handle it. Answers and the actions keep making decisions. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Hope you like the podcast. Please share it with your friends, anybody that you know, anybody that's into tennis, anybody that's into bettering themselves, share it.